Great. Okay, go ahead, Pastor. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of gathering together on Zoom and we pray for your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and minds that we might listen well and share what's on our heart and what's on our mind that you might be honored and that each of us might be blessed. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Okay, so this week's topic is baptism. Hopefully you heard the little introduction, um, 11 minutes of, of just kind of informal light stuff to get us thinking. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to introduce Charlie Haynes is here. Charlie was the most faithful, active Bible student we had at Christ Martinez. He was baptized as an adult. Um, you mind sharing, Charlie, how old you were when you were baptized? Uh, I think I was, I don't know, I was close to 50, I think. Okay. Uh, probably early 50s, something like that. So, 65 right now. So Charlie, Charlie and I met um, regularly on Monday evenings um, for hour and a half or so um, for years, actually just the two of us. And then we want to introduce um, Pastor Andre again. We'll let him introduce himself too, but I um, got acquainted with him when he led some workshops at the 2015 um, California, Nevada, Hawaii District Convention in San Jose. And his topic was, um, exorcism and evangelism as correct me if i'm wrong pastor andrew um that it was really um is exorcism a viable um method of preparing people for evangelism or evangelizing basically you want to briefly introduce yourself and and say what you meant by that sure thank you it's good to see all of you here again this evening. Uh, my name is Pastor Andre. That is short to remember and easy to remember. Mm -hmm. My full name is uh, Bimbinyaina Havanzanahari Randriana Sulu. Whoa. Yes. And I'm a pastor uh, from the Lutheran Church of Madagascar. I'm here in Kentucky uh, pursuing a uh, a PhD in intercultural studies, concentration in evangelism and discipleship. Uh, the question asked by Pastor Phil about exorcism. Well, exorcism, we, the word exorcism, we don't really use that word. Why? Because it is not biblical. The word that we use from scripture is casting out demons. That's what the word in referring to exorcism is used according to scripture. And that's what we use, but we use it in our own language, which is called Um Exorcism, it is an instrument that is used by Jesus and also the apostles and also the first church, the early church in as an evangelistic tool that is accompanies the preaching of the gospel of making visible the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because after preaching the word of God, then the performance of exorcism, then it is accompanied by signs as what scripture says. This manifests the presence of the kingdom of God. Now that is scripturally rooted. And that does have relationship with uh, discipleship because those who come to faith in Christ, it doesn't stop at conversion where they come to faith. It continues on to discipleship. Why? Because discipleship is important. That's where we learn about Christ, about our salvation, 
and about what it means being body of Christ, what it means being children of God, what it means to share, uh, to participate in the mission that Jesus has given to us to continue to do. And that is to make others disciples. I think that's briefly, uh, yeah. But we, we will continue this discussion on this topic later on. Yeah. So um, one of the things that Pastor Andre mentioned that was kind of intriguing to me about baptism, I asked him about sponsors. Mm -hmm. They have sponsors. Mm -hmm. And he said they call them witnesses. And Pastor Andre, would you share what the expectation is for these sponsors or witnesses in your community? Okay. Um, in the Malagas Lutheran Church context, we don't use the word sponsor. Instead, we use the word witness because it has more value and accountability and responsibility. Those who are received to be baptized, they have to have a witness or witnesses who will be accountable to them and who will be responsible for them. Why? Because after baptism, these new converts, they are initiated into discipleship. These witnesses who are already Christians, who have advanced in their discipleship process and and, the trend, and uh, advance into maturity of the faith in Christ, they have more experience. So in helping these new converts, they get involved in their life. Yes. That's why we call them witness because they also teach these new converts what it means to be a Christian, what the responsibility of Christians are and what are expected of them as Christians, as followers of Christ. Pastor Andre, approximately how long would a, have, a person have to have been a Christian in order to qualify to be a witness? That's a very it good question. Like the witness is kind of like a mentor almost, it sounds like. It does, but that's a very good question. Um, that question is difficult to respond to. Why? Because each individual, each Christian um, has a different level of maturity of the faith. Sure. Yeah. So that is a very difficult question. Um, before witnesses can be approved, you know, of uh, being accountable and responsible of new converts, they have to have, um, how would you call that? Um, a discussion with the local pastor. Yeah. The witnesses and also those who are going to be baptized. They have to have discussion with the pastor first. And then the pastor decides if uh, these witnesses um, are approved or not. Does so let's sense? say that, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Let's, let's say somebody is approved as a witness. Mm -hmm. How long, like how many years does this relationship continue? And how much interaction is there? Is it usually meeting face to face, um, like once a month or something like that? That's a very good question. <laughs> very good question. Well. As uh, you and I spoke earlier, context also plays a role in this. In the Malagasy cultural context, it is a collectivist uh, culture, which means that it is a community. And so speaking about community, community life is very important in the Malagasy culture which is the opposite of here. Here it is monoculture where everything is individualized. So there is a difference. Um, in the collectivist uh, culture, 
community is prioritized. That means the need of the community is put above the need of individual. Yeah. So talking about uh, discipleship, the witnesses who are responsible for the new converts, their relationship is lifelong. Mm. Mm. It's not a short term relationship. It's a lifelong relationship. Why? Because our relationship with each other as Christians begins the moment that we become God's children through baptism. And this relationship that begins here in this lifetime continues to where we will go when we live this uh, life. So that's why it is a long life relationship. It's not a short term relationship. My I'd like to encourage others. Danny, you have, please make oh, comments. My daughter make spent comments. a month in, in Madagascar last year with friends. We have friends from there. Oh, and that's okay. what impressed Wonderful. her the most was the community. She said they get along. They take care of each other. They love each other. She, she said, yes, I saw lemurs and all kinds of orchids. And, mm -hmm. and I saw the baobab bao trees. And I saw all the wonderful things that were just before they get, you know, <laughs> absolutely. She said, yeah. But what impressed me most was the people, the way they love each other. Her hosts are Catholic. And so they were all excited because the Pope was there last year. <laughs> and they were just yeah. so excited about that. But she said, Mom, I passed the Lutheran Church. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but she loved the, the family-ness of it, or the culture. That's she wonderful. loved it. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah, perhaps we can talk uh, later on. Yeah, love to. Love for you to meet her. <laughs> Yes. Other comments or questions? Well, I have, I have a question. So traditionally, we like to baptize infants when they're first born, you know, like six weeks, mm -hmm. you know, within a year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's what I always did with my kids. But then kids don't remember that they're baptized. <laughs> so then it's like, well, is it better for them to be older, maybe like in kindergarten, so then they'll remember that special moment? Just a discussion. Okay. Anybody? Uh, Pastor Andre? So, <laughs> can you rephrase the question, please? Well, it's not really a question. It's just kind of a statement that okay. typically um, when you grow up mm -hmm. you in a, in a Christian family and faith, you mm -hmm. tend to baptize children at a very young age mm -hmm. and yes. usually they're babies. Mm -hmm. yes. But um, of course, that baby will never remember that they were baptized sure you celebrate it um and have their baptismal birthday mm -hmm. but i'm just wondering if it's more meaningful to maybe have them baptized when they remember it that special day that's all i don't remember my baptism i was a baby i don't remember it i know i was baptized mm -hmm. anyway that's what I thought when I heard the sermon today. I thought, oh, I wish I remembered that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, Anyone else would like to add? <laughs> uh, before uh, we discuss about it. I, well, I, I will say something. I'm told that, um, you're, that, are, that we're all born in sin. Mm -hmm. And that it was important as soon as and early as possible to baptize them in the name of the... Mm -hmm. Uh, father and the son yeah so um i remember pastor glock years ago pressuring me almost well you don't want to want too much time and you know, you... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so from that perspective 
Well, I, I have something that when we, when I listened to Pastor Phil's sermon, um, I had always had this question too about the fact that Lutherans do infant baptism, but I actually thought I was reminded that it isn't something that, you know, we are doing, but what God is doing in us, which yeah. as an infant, I feel good that, you know, um, that the Holy Spirit is given to my child, you know, at an early age. And, and then through just, you know, being in a Christian family, they, they learn what being a Christian is and what their faith, you know, will build from there. Mm -hmm. So, because I have heard lots of, you know, there are many religions that they don't baptize until the children are confirmed or at a much older age and look mm -hmm. down on infant baptism because they don't think children understand it. But that's not the whole point of baptism. Right. Hmm. Now, my mother, um, I was born in Poland during the war. And so my mother had just um, spoke, spoke with her pastor in the little village where we lived to have me baptized. I was six weeks old when um, the um, edict came out that we had to flee our, our property. So she was afraid that, you know, um, that possibly something would happen to me as an infant. So she actually baptized me, which she, which she called an emergency baptism in the event that I perish and, um, and not survive the, the, the trip. So anyway, so, and I think, so she took that very seriously that she wanted to make sure I was baptized, even though I was, you know, even though she performed the baptism, I was only six weeks old. So, and she, she told me about that a number of times that she was afraid that um, I wouldn't survive. The pastor? Yes, uh, which one? Go ahead, Pastor. Pastor Fellow, myself. Yeah. When, when we're babies, mm -hmm. isn't that your parents that are making that decision or your guardian? It's not from your mind as a baby. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on, but water being poured in your head. <laughs> yeah. So is it such thing as two baptisms? Hmm. Um, when you get older and get more yeah. knowledge, mm -hmm. what well, confirmation is. Yeah. Confirmation. yeah. Well, in the Lutheran practice, um, for example, in the Malagas Lutheran practice, um, baptism is only once. Yeah. And that counts. When baptism is done, the word of God in water, in which God uses it as means of, means of a saving grace. And baptism is done in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as according to scripture, then it is valid. So baptism is done only once. There cannot be, there should not be more uh, multiple baptisms. For example, if you were baptized in a Catholic church, then you move into the Lutheran church and then you do another baptism, that would, that would not be, um, that should not be acceptable. I think that would be the correct word. Yeah, that's the Lutheran and the Roman Catholic practice <clears throat> in this country yeah. too. So yeah. it's to me, it's very refreshing that a Roman Catholic um, priest will not rebaptize an infant that was baptized by <laughs> Lutherans or any other denomination really that's reasonably orthodox yeah. that baptized out in the name of the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We do have a problem though, that may be kind of unique in our country where a lot of infants who were baptized here, when they become teenagers or adults, no matter what the age, because they don't remember it and felt that they never made a commitment really to Christ, they want to be baptized again. And there are individuals that have been baptized multiple times because they want this kind of reassurance. And 
that's um, con concerning because it's like, you know, we're thinking that we have to have this, this inner feeling and inner feeling is something that the LDS, the, the Mormons emphasize a lot, that you have to have the inner feeling, otherwise it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. But it's really God doing the action and God's word and promises that are carrying this out. And the point um, that's been made about, well, if we're, we're born in sin, we speak about original sin, how else does an infant have the opportunity of being um, incorporated into the body of Christ and the sins forgiven without God doing his thing in baptism? And of course, you know, we have to keep in mind that even adults are not, quote, figuring us out and making some decision. It's God working in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And yeah, I, I really like the fact that Ruth Graham, who was baptized as an infant, as a Presbyterian, that Billy really wanted her to be baptized again as an adult, but she was firm. I was baptized. That's good enough. And that's the way it ended throughout their many, many years of marriage. Yeah, I would like to add to what Pastor Phil says, <clears throat> just saying that in the Lutheran teaching, when baptism is done with word and water, um, <clears throat> then it is valid. However, if someone was baptized from another denomination where it, they were not baptized with word, water, and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then that baptism is not valid then yes, they should be baptized. And we have a practice in the United States at least that we do kind of a conditional baptism for individuals who, who aren't sure that they were ever baptized. So it's kind of like, you know, if this um, individual was not baptized, then we're baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and so forth. But I think we have done a rather poor job in terms of communicating the meaning and the significance of baptism on an ongoing basis. And because of that, um, our infant Baptist children grow up and they think they have to be rebaptized again because you know, I didn't know what was going on. But again, it's God who's doing the work it's not a human thing this is other why, comments yeah go ahead this is why community is important in discipleship when our children are baptized when children are baptized they have those witnesses who are accountable and responsible for them those witnesses can be parents and other christians who come together as disciples of these children so throughout the lifetime of the children as they grow up they are constantly reminded and they are being discipled when they are being discipled then they would not forget that they have been baptized and they will their faith in christ would be sustained why because their discipleship begins at the moment when they are baptized yeah. And the question in relation to infant baptism, is infant, infant baptism valid? Yes, it is. Where in scripture does it say? That's a very good question. In the Malagas Lutheran teaching, do you remember the scripture passage where Jesus, where Jesus is this, where Jesus, where the apostles, they uh, prevent the children from coming to Jesus and then Jesus um, rebukes them and say, let the children come. Why? Because the kingdom of God is also theirs. So we use this 
scriptural passage in connection to infant baptism. The kingdom of God is also for children. It's not only for adults, it's also for children. And this is why it's important to have witnesses who are accountable and responsible of children when they are brought to baptism. The ones who respond to the questions at baptism during the baptismal rite mm -hmm. are the parents and the witnesses, the other witnesses. Mm -hmm. So they are, they have accountability and responsibility of discipling the child or children mm -hmm. as they grow up. And I love the mm -hmm. So yes, children, um, infant baptism is valid and it is scriptural. So those who say that they should wait, people should wait until they are able, until they are, they are grown up to be baptized, they are holding these people from entering the kingdom of God. Because in baptism, it is not only initiating people into the kingdom of God, but also sharing the grace that God has given to us in regards to salvation, in regards to being children of God, and in regards in participation in God's mission in the world as uh, commissioned by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. So by having to say that, by saying that people should wait until they are grown up to be baptized, then we become roadblocks for these people from receiving grace from God. Can I say something too? Um, you know, when, when we have our children baptized and we have sponsors, which is what we call them here. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you listen to what the sponsors are actually asked to do, mm -hmm. what they promise to do mm -hmm. during the baptism, it's, it's just right all along those lines. It is, it's mm -hmm. teaching them the scriptures. It's mm -hmm. reminding them of their baptism. It's teaching them the Lord's Prayer and the, the mm -hmm. Apostles' Creed. And um, just, there's, they are, that is their role. And I think sometimes we we err on the side of we just want to pick somebody that's a good friend, but we don't look at somebody as a sponsor who will really take that seriously. Yeah. As far um, as being that Christian, you know, mentor for them. Could one of the roadblocks of, you know, of um, of discipling those children, be the um, a lack of relationship. A lack you know of what I mean by that? The Lord. Be, be a distance and a relationship between the sponsors and the children, where. Where. Um, I don't know if it would be fair to say we're in this context, a monocultural context where everything is individualized. That means everything has to be according to that person's need, person's want. Mm -hmm. If they don't want that, then they're not going to receive it, accept it. Yeah. That is from the influential of the world in this context where everything is individualized. Could it be from that? That there so, is a lack? So Pastor Andrew, in, in, in the, in the uh, Madagascar culture, mm -hmm. when you have this community emphasis, does the community as a whole, do they support the witnesses mentoring this child? Yes. Yes. So that all not, goes together. Yes. Wow. Not only the parents and the witnesses who bring the children to baptism, but the whole church. Mm -hmm. The whole church. Because you see, in the baptismal rite, when children are, are brought to be baptized, during the baptismal rite, the parents and the witnesses are, are questioned. And then mm -hmm. they are told about the responsibility. After the children are baptized, at the closing of the um, baptismal rite, then the pastor turns to the whole congregation and announces to the whole congregation 
that these children are now God's children and mm -hmm. they are part of the community. So all of the members of the community are responsible and accountable for these children. Mm. Yeah, we sometimes do that, but I think what you're pointing out, Pastor Andre, yeah. is the difference in the two church cultures as well as mm -hmm. the, yeah. the secular culture. Yes. That your level of discipleship and commitment is typically, I think, so much stronger than ours. And as Terry mentioned, you know, so often the sponsors are best friends. And so our relatives are mm -hmm. relatives mm -hmm. and the pastors frequently acquiesce. I've done that myself. Mm -hmm. um, go along with with the wishes of the parents and um, thinking that, well, it'll be other friends, relatives, the parents or the church community that'll pick up the slack from these sponsors who may not even be much of any Christian. So, um, and, and you pointed it out a number of times, Pastor Andre, the difference between your community-oriented culture mm -hmm. and our individualistic type of culture. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really a significant issue for us. We are, are over our, our 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I, will, so, I would like to make a, sure. a brief. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though we, we here in this uh, context live in an individualistic uh, context, there is the opportunity of creating a community and that is in the church. If we go back into scripture, the disciples, not only the 12, but those who came afterwards in the early church, even though there was the Jewish community, the Greek community, these disciples created a community in which they were able to have um, live a life as the body of Christ. And that is an opportunity that you can create there where you live, a community as the body of Christ that lives according to scripture. And that is not only living it orally, okay, verbally, but living it as life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very much. Mm -hmm. So if you if you move forward with this, then you will see that this community that you create as the body of Christ, people will be attracted to it because as we live in this period where people are searching for community because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. they will reach out to you because they see that you are a community that defies the negatives from the pandemic where there is love, there is care, and there is a strong relationship between the members in this community as the body of Christ. And you know when the, go ahead. Jenny. No, no, I just started to say, I love that passage in Acts when other people look at because they were all doing so much and he said, see how they love each other. Yes. And I thought, mm -hmm. what a wonderful mm -hmm. example of people know you by your love, you know, that's, yes. Yeah. See how they yeah. love each other, you know. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Andre, thank you very much. And oh, thank yes. each of you for all of your participation. Good to have this. So I assume no one has any objection to putting this on, um, we don't know for sure whether to be YouTube or whatever, so others could see it. Is that true? No objections. Yeah, that's fine. No objections. If, if you we have don't. any more questions in relation to the topic today, you can reach out to Pastor Phil or myself and we will get back to you. You can reach out by email or text. Mm -hmm. If that is okay with you, Pastor Phil. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Let's close with the benediction. 
Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit in each of us. We thank you for each participant, for Pastor Andre. We ask that you bless and keep us as we go our separate ways, that you refresh us with a good night's sleep, that in the morning we wake up invigorated and ready to make the most of tomorrow to your honor and to the welfare of those that you place before us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Hope thank to you. See all of you next week. Thank you. Hope thank to see you. everyone thank next you. week. Yes. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank Bye. Enjoy a friend. Good turnout. Have a good week. Yeah, Enjoy very nice friend. turnout. Yeah. I talk too much. So. Next time, see you at seven o'clock next week. Okay. okay. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.